One of the biggest limitations with the E92 M3 is a lack of negative camber at the front wheels. This results in quite a lot of understeer when the car's been driven at its limit. To fix this, you need an adjustable front camber plate. This is a part specifically designed to increase the negative camber at the front axle of the car. In this video, we're gonna be taking you through our design process, similar to the previous video we've already covered of the initial design stages, and we're gonna be showing you how we design, prototype, manufacture, and test a new product, such as our camber plate for the E92 M3. <laughs> Last time, we started developing some camera plates for the E92 M3. We walked you through some of the design considerations, the CAD design stage, and finally, we 3D printed a prototype, which is here in front of me. Now, we're at the stage where we can manufacture a fully functioning prototype in our machine shop next door. With this product, we can then test fit to the car, and we can go and test it out on the roads and on the track before putting that part into final manufacture. All of our components are made here in the UK in-house completely by our own engineers. This means that we actually have the unique opportunity to show you the behind the scenes on how our parts are manufactured, such as our camera plates that we're making for the E92 M3. It also means that we have much greater control over the quality of the products and every single component within it. So that when we're manufacturing it, building it next door and packaging it to send out to you as a customer, we can ensure that we are sending the highest quality component possible out to you for maximum performance and maximum longevity and reliability as well. So let's get started and let's take a look at some of the individual components that we're gonna be making today for the E92 camera plates and which machines they're made on and how we manufacture them. So we're now in the back corner of our CNC machine shop, which is next door to our workshop. So this is the next stage of the process where we have 3D printed the part, we've test fitted that 3D printed product to the vehicle, and we know that spatially the components are all gonna work in the wheel arch and we can carry on further with the designs. So the next step is to then actually prototype a fully functional working product here in the machine shop. So we turn the CAD file into code using a CAD CAM processor. That's all done upstairs in the design office. We then generate the code for our machines. So the first step of that process is to select the metal we're gonna be using for this product. So the majority of this component is out of 6082 T6 aluminium. This is our choice of metal because it is not only extremely strong, it is also extremely lightweight. So we get a very high performing product that doesn't weigh a lot. And so you get all the benefits of the adjustment, the performance gains without adding too much mass to the system at all. So it's a very, very popular choice within motorsport, within aerospace for those exact reasons. So our assembly for the E92 camera plate is split down into several different components. All of these need to be manufactured here in house and then they come together to make the final assembly that we're gonna be fitting to the car today. So when we split that assembly down, we end up with different components that have different attributes, which means they need to go on different machines. So for example, we have some circular parts here. So this is our camera plate core that is going to house the bearing for the camera plate in there. And then that's gonna be secured in place with one of our stainless steel lock rings. These are all made on our lathe. So with the part being circular, that already indicates that it's going to be more efficient to make the part on a lathe. That is where the billet is held in the chuck, the chuck spins up and effectively spins the bar. The tools then come in and are completely stationary and then they move only towards an inboard, whereas the part is fully spinning and it therefore gets cut down to size. The code from our CAD CAM software is put into the machine and then it generates the CAD model that we had on the screen earlier. We can then verify this and measure the part and overlay that with the CAD model to make sure it's within tolerance. And once we're happy, we can then manufacture them. So this is the piece that is gonna be fitted to the car today. So this is one of the cores for the left-hand side. So we're gonna get this all assembled with one of our rotoval bearings, which is one of the largest bearings on the market as well. So we spec these bearings, not only because they're extremely high quality, but because they're also a lot larger than a lot of other bearings on the market and they don't make any additional noise when you're out on the roads. We have these fitted to a lot of our cars, we drive them regularly on the roads and they don't have a single bit of noise increase. In fact, we're gonna try and bring that to you in a video. We're gonna get some measuring equipment and sort of show you how little noise is actually generate when being used on the road. They're completely silent. So that's gonna be housed in that core. And then the next piece is gonna be our spring cup. So this again, being circular, is manufactured on the lathe. So we have a very tight tolerance in here. That means that the bearing needs to be a really nice press fit. And that's gonna be machined to such a tight tolerance 
that it's an absolutely perfect press fit for the bearing that doesn't overload the casing, so it still spins nice and freely, but it also isn't gonna drop off and it's gonna support its own mass. So this is made again in the lathe, and that is another circular piece that's gonna be made on the seven axis lathe behind me. So some components are a little bit more complex. So whereas these are just different diameters turned down out of bar, we also have our CNC mills, which are very busy making more complex parts like the top plate here. So this starts life as a completely square piece of billet. This is then mounted in a vise in the machine on the bed. And whereas before we were spinning the actual piece of metal to cut it, on our mills, the actual piece of metal gets moved in X and Y and moves around like this but the spinning is all done by the cutter. So the cutter on the mill fires up, comes down in Z, and then the part moves around as it's machined away, which we'll show you a bit of footage of that as well, so you can see that in action. So this part is actually manufactured on our three axis mills, and a three axis basically means that it has three movement positions it can do all at once. So effectively, the bed can move in X and Y at the same time, which would be a diagonal path, all at the same time as the tool coming down. So that means we can cut circular paths, we can cut up and down, we can get nice fillet radiuses as well. So this is a perfect component for our three axis mills that we have here. We have quite a lot of those, but behind me here is our five axis mill. So this means that it's a lot more complex in the shapes it can generate, and it means that we're able to unlock even more in our design for our future products. So things like our top mounts don't need a five axis, but we are currently developing some products we're gonna be bringing to you very soon that can really only be made on a five axis, and they're gonna be very intricate and they're gonna add new products to the range that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to create for you. So really excited about what this is gonna bring. And a five axis effectively means that there is five different things that can happen all at once to create a really good 3D path. So effectively what we have is the part can move like the others in X and Y, like this, and the tool can move in Z. So we still have those three axes, but then what can happen is the actual bed itself can tilt and it can rotate. But that can all happen in one smooth motion. So if you imagine the part moving like this, and all at the same time, we can then pass a cutter through there, all of a sudden we have a serpentine path that would be impossible to replicate with such a smooth finish on a three axis mill. So this is gonna unlock a lot more manufacturing capability for us, and we're really excited to bring some fresh products out to show you from this machine too. So that's the extent of the parts we're gonna make for the camera plates today. So we're gonna get these all together next door into our build bay, where the team are gonna get these all polished they're gonna go into an ultrasonic bath, which is effectively a bath of chemicals that fires ultrasonic pulses, and it washes something called swarf out of the components. So swarf is effectively pieces of metal that get chipped off in the machining process, and they can end up in things like the tapped holes here, and just generally in the components where they're a little bit more of a complex shape. That's gonna wash and blast all of that away. The parts are then gonna come out with all the coolant removed, all the swarf removed, and then the team are gonna polish this to a mirror finish, and then we're gonna laser etch that. So laser etching is where we can put it in our machine, and we can make a bit of code that basically puts our logo in there. And on these plates in particular, we can put part numbers and our left hand and right hand diagram that shows very clearly which side of the car that plate is intended for. With the manufacture of the prototype components complete, the parts then go next door into our build area. So this is a clean area where all of the components are built and assembled. So we have our final assembly here. What we wanted to do at this stage before we get this fitted to the car and hidden away, we just wanted to show you some of the design considerations and actually some of the challenges that we faced in particular with the design of the camera plates for the E92 M3 chassis. So one of the main things that was quite difficult to actually design into the component was the spring bearing. So to show you on a more modern BMW, we have the camera plate off a G87 M2. So this is a completely standard top mount that comes on the car. And this is also a very similar style of assembly to the F80 series, the M140i's, the F2X's. All the more modern BMWs from about 2014 onwards have this design. And that is where they have a completely separate plastic spring bearing. So this mounts underneath the OEM top mount, and these are all OEM components. But what you can do is effectively remove this from the OEM top mount and transfer that directly across onto our design. This means that we have a spring bearing that the spring and damper can rotate on because it's a McPherson strut. So as the top mount stays static, you can turn your front wheels and this spring bearing allows the front wheels to turn without the spring binding and locking up. However, on the E92 M3, things are different. The spring bearing is in the top mount, but it's integrated completely. This cannot be removed and it is a complete part of the actual top mount itself. So this means we don't have a bearing that we can simply transfer across 
And the diameter of it is also much bigger than the FAX and GAX bearings. So we can't just transfer one of those across either. So we had to make something completely from scratch. The difficulty though, is making that adjustable in camber whilst maintaining an independent spring bearing. So this is because on a non-adjustable top mount, the spring bearing is completely concentric with the top mount itself. However, if we want to actually adjust camber, what we need to be able to achieve is moving the damper position and the spring position independently of the top plate itself. If we try and move these independently, this still needs to be able to rotate. So it has to therefore move with the damper whilst the top mount stays still. So therefore we needed to integrate a completely independent bearing that was there just for the spring that could move with the core, allowing damper and spring movement so we could get camber and caster into the chassis whilst it was still mounted up perfectly. So we managed to achieve that in the final design by including a bearing here. So basically we have the lower spring base and that has its own independent bearing that is press fitted onto our core, which has more than enough resistance free movement. So you can turn your wheels similar to the GX top mounts without any resistance and any spring bind. This also is completely independent of the top part. So it can move completely independently as you adjust your camber and caster, meaning that we can do our camber and caster adjustments from the top, moving the whole assembly out independently from the top mount itself and still have that rotation and movement. The final thing we really want to incorporate in this design was for it to hold itself together perfectly well when you're trying to assemble it onto the car. Because there are some designs that aren't held together completely. So when you're actually trying to assemble these onto the car, this spring base can just fall off and disassemble itself. But we wanted a really solid, sturdy unit so you can assemble it without any issues. You just put that on the car without any worry of anything dislodging or binding up. So our assembly is one complete unit as you receive it. So we're really, really happy with the final design of our product. So we're gonna get these fitted onto the car and we're gonna get some testing done and take it for a little drive. So the camera plates are now all fitted up to the E92 M3. So these can be adjusted before they get fitted to the car. So when they go onto the shock absorber, you can actually set the camera setting even left to right because we have that slotted adjustment where it has the anti-slip grooves in it. So we've actually set this to the sort of third most position. So one off the most maximum degrees of camber we can get because this car isn't purely track use. We're looking for around a three degrees number on this car today. Um, the minimum and maximum on this car is currently a negative four in maximum and negative 1.3 in minimum. Now that number will change slightly depending on ride height. This car is fitted with lowering springs, but if you went a little bit lower, you'd get more at the maximum and minimum. And if you went a little bit higher, you'd get less at the maximum and minimum. So that's just a, a rule of thumb for the range that these camera plates have to offer. With those fitted up to the car now, we can get an alignment done on the car because it's going to knock out the toe settings. So it's really important that whenever you change the camber at a front or a rear axle, that you check and reset your toe settings because it will be knocked out. So always very important to get an alignment done when you're fitting parts to your car as well. So with these fitted, we're expecting to see a lot less understeer from the front end, much more positivity from the nose, a lot more confidence in the car as well. So really excited to get out in this car and give it a good amount of testing. So we're gonna get this off the ramp now after the alignment, head out and we're gonna get some testing done. The final piece of the puzzle now is actually probably the longest part of the process, which is the testing. So we're gonna be testing these camera plates in all of their various camera positions. We're gonna be taking it on the road and on the track and really putting the car through its paces. We're gonna be looking out for a few things such as bearings binding, any noises, any wear, any contacts inside the wheel arches in the various positions. And only once we're completely happy that in all those positions that these parts can stand the test of time and the forces that they're gonna be subjected to, only then will they be listed for sale. So you may have noticed that the previous video was probably quite a while ago compared to when this video is going to be coming out. And that's because we're only gonna post this video when we are completely finished with the development process and the parts are listed and ready for sale. So if you're watching this now, then that will be the case and those parts will be listed and will be completely ready for sale. In the next episode for this series, we're gonna be taking a look at the rear axle as we develop some new products for the rear. And we've also got some really cool USPs going into that part as well. So we're really excited to take you through a little bit of a different channel on how we design and develop that product for the rear axle. We'll see you then.